welcome everyone tonight. We get a chance to take a look at lesson five, which is turn. And uh, I'm excited to share that with you, share what uh, God's been working on me through this lesson. And uh, my name is Cam. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. So glad that Jesus loves me. So that he, glad that he shed his blood on the cross for my sins. I celebrate freedom from anger, anxiety, and depression. I'm working on a lot of things. Cam comes with a lot of baggage. And uh, we've got some things that we're working on, working on, on many things that, that God has, continues to reveal. And that's the great thing about going through these lessons year after year, over and over again. We, we, God continues to peel back the layers in our lives and, and reveal different things. Perhaps things that I wasn't ready to, to address a few years ago that today I'm ready to take on. So I hope you're, you, you feel the same way. And, uh, you know, we've been on this journey a little bit since the beginning of the year. And we started out with the, with the first lesson, which was denial. And that's a tough one to face because we got to kind of look at some things in our lives and say, boy, uh, I, I didn't realize that I'm this way. I didn't realize that these things cause this kind of hurt, that this kind of pain existed because of fill in the blank. So we had that lesson and then we talked about being powerless. These, these things that we have, these tendencies, these character defects that we have uh, were essentially powerless. But then there's hope. And that was the next lesson. We learned about the hope that, that Jesus came to pay the price for our sins and that he already knew that we were, were flawed. That we, Just like the song we sang, he, he knew that we were flawed, but he came to make us flawless, right? And then last uh, two weeks ago, you know, Kevin hit it out of the park when he, he talked about insanity and the ability uh, th that God has to, to make us sane and, and to create sanity in our lives. And he talked about all the insanity of the things that we do and the things that continue to, to take us and and really just create that that craziness right that craziness in our lives that that perpetual hurt that perpetual uh, the relationships that are broken the, the different things that each and every one of us I know have faced so tonight we're going to talk about turn with all that that we've talked about in the past uh, few uh, six seven eight weeks we're going to talk about turn which is principle three which is consciously choose to commit all my life uh, and will to Christ's care and control. So in principle three, we choose to commit our lives and our wills into Christ's care and control. And in step uh, three in AA, it says we turn our wills and our lives. Of course, at CR, as Kevin already said, we recognize our one true higher power is Jesus, right? He is the one true and living God, and we name him. Because we know him personally. This is about a relationship with him. And when people choose to live this principle, you consciously choose to commit all of your life to Christ's care and control. And it's a daily thing. And we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into these, these uh, steps and as, as we get into these lessons as we talk about inventory and different things like that. But we surrender to the one true and higher power who is Jesus Christ. So how do you do that? How do you turn your life and your will over to Jesus Christ? Well, you turn. You T-U-R-N. So we're going to take a look at our acrostic tonight. And if you have that, the T is going to stand for turn. Or excuse me, trust. Trust is the first letter. So I don't know about you guys, but um, in some things, I'm a really early adopter I, I like to you know check out what the, the latest technology is I can I can do those things but there's a couple things that I am just a stick in the mud I think I've said this before up here and one of the things for me to trust was the backup camera in the car now I think most everybody's probably been in a car with with a backup camera but for so long I did not trust that thing that was in the center of the console that was right there and I remember the day that I learned to really trust the backup camera because I was doing one of these. You know how that goes where, you, where you're turning back and you're trying to look and you're looking around. So I'm focused more on that way. Well, guess what was coming from that way? So I'm starting to back up and all of a sudden my peripheral just caught an edge of something and I stopped. And I looked and I immediately looked at that camera and I saw that I could see it the whole way through. That it, it, would have, it was way off to the side. He was coming for a while. I could have seen it. I had the tools right there. But for me, the trust part was, was difficult. It was, it was all right there for, for years. It had been there, actually, if I'm being honest. It had been there for a while. 
And my wife had adapted the, very easily adapted to this kind of technology, but I had not. And so trust. And so why do we, why do we think that we, we can't trust God? Why is that? I mean, let's just talk about a couple things that he knows that are, that are some pretty amazing things that probably you don't know. How about how many hairs you have on your head? God knows those things. I don't even know that number. I'm just glad that it's still there, right? I'm glad that's, well, it's starting to turn gray. It's heading there. He knows the number of our days. He knows how long you and I will live. That's an important thing to really keep in mind because we've gone through a season of, of really extreme fear where people are worried that they're gonna die from a virus, right? And the Bible says that he knows the number of our days. They've already been numbered. He, did, he wasn't caught off by surprise, by the way, in 2020. God was not cut off. He was not, he was like, wow, I never saw that coming. No, he, he knew that that was coming. And he still knew the, the number of our days. He can even navigate the complexities of our hearts and our emotions. That's even something that I have a, a hard time sometimes sifting through and deciphering. Like, I feel this way, but is that right? And, and sometimes you, you've done that battle in the mind, and, and, and with the mind and the heart and but he already knows those things. So why, why is it sometimes that we're so slow, just like me and that backup camera, to turn our trust over to God? Bible says you must trust, understand, and repent. So three different things here. So we know that T stands for trust. The next uh, one is the U, and it stands for understand. Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Putting our trust in Jesus is so simple. It's so easy. Yet sometimes it's so hard for others to release that trust, right? It's so hard to let go of, of the things that are so familiar. Even if they're causing damage, even if they're causing hurt, even if they're breaking relationships, we still hold on to those things often, right? And releasing that trust uh, or, or expressing that faith and trust is very difficult. Faith is not a sense, a sight, or a reason. Faith is simply taking God at his word. It's simply taking, just like I needed to take that, the face value of that, that backup camera right there in the dash that, that was very clear, that, that showed all what was going on behind me, I just needed to put my faith and trust in that. We try to make, I think, salvation very complex. I think we try to, to, add more to it. I think we, in our minds, in our human minds, the way that we're wired, I think we, we want to, to think that we need to work for our, for our salvation. Mm. I think that that's very, something that's just, it seems like maybe it's a trade that we can work for. Like, if I just do this, then maybe God will give me that, or I can earn his, or, or I, I'm not ready for God yet because I got to work my way up to him, but that's not how this works. See, God accepts us exactly how we are. He accepts us with all. He accepts us in our current state with all of our habits, hurts, and hangups. He accepts us just the way that you and I are. In, in our minds, we, I think we think it can't be that simple. Yet it is, just as Romans ten nine says. Bible says also in Proverbs three five to six: Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Our understanding uh, is, is earthbound. It's human to the core. It's very limited. Our minds are, are, are essentially not like the minds of Christ. We have a very finite set of, um, set of thinking. We have a very finite way of, of looking at things. We, we can't see necessarily the, the plan that he has for our lives. So that's where the faith comes in. That's where, where that is needed. You can't see now what is happening. Um, you can't see how what is happening today may fit into the great plan God has and is shaping for your life. We see now, but God sees forever. He sees the whole picture. You know, you and I are just kind of a, 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 a blot on the map as far as the time, you know, of where we are at. It's 2021 and, and we're here today. And, you know, whether you're, you're here for for 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, whatever your time is, you're here for that time period. And that's the time that you're here. But God sees all throughout history. He sees even beyond. He sees the impact that perhaps uh, something like tonight's uh, lesson or turning simply 
to God can have for generations to come. He sees beyond that. He sees beyond our finite scope. Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 13 says, For our gifts of knowledge are only partial, but when what is perfect comes, then that which is partial will disappear. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial, and then it will be complete. So when we get to heaven to be with him, we'll see all that picture that he sees completely. And that's where the trust comes in. We need to trust him today for what he can see and what we can't see. We don't need to be perfect, uh, don't need to have a perfect understanding of him to ask Jesus into our, our lives as Lord and Savior. God doesn't lead you year by year, not even day by day. He directs you step by step. So as you, as you are, are going through these, this, this, these steps with me, if you haven't made a chance, uh, had a chance where you turned your life over to God, you know, tonight is a night, this is the time to do that, where you can actually trust him for even where you're at right now, for your understanding of him, even though it will, I know it will grow, it will expand, you'll, he'll, he'll reveal, reveal more to you in his time, but you can trust him even where you're at right now. Third letter is R, which is for repent. So the first one was trust, T for trust, U for understand, and now R for repent. Repentance is how you begin to enjoy the freedom of your loving relationship with God. Repenting of your sins is not thanking the Lord that you, you aren't half as bad as, as the person sitting next to you. That's not true repentance, right? True repentance uh, only, uh, true repentance affects our whole person and changes our entire view of life. Repentance is take, take up God's point of view on our lives instead of our own. So to, to, do, to truly repent, you need to do two things. First, you need to turn away from your sins, and then second, you need to turn toward God. So number one, you turn away from your sins, and second, you turn toward God. It's that recognition that, okay, here's where I'm headed, here's the sin that I'm in, and I need to turn away from that, and okay, God, I'm looking towards you. You are the author and the finisher of our, our faith, as, as the Bible says. The Bible says a lot about repentance. I'll, I'll go through a couple different verses for you here. Mark 1, uh, 15, it says, Turn from your sins and act on this glorious news. Ezekiel 18, 30 and 31 says, Repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourself of all offenses you have committed, and get a new heart and a new spirit. Romans 12, 2 says, Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all of his demands, and moves towards the goal of true maturity. The Bible says so much more even about repentance, but it seems that most people re repent of their sins more from a fear of God uh, and from the fear of, of punishment rather than from a real change of heart. It seems that often we do that. We, we're often more motivated by fear than actually love. But I want to tell you tonight that God loves you. And we should be driven by his love for us. Remember, we talked a couple weeks ago about this in the prodigal son. That story was so powerful. We, we think that we're going to be met with a, a, a father that is, what did you do? Why did you do this? Tell me what, what happened. Why, why in the world would you do that? Why would you make those decisions? But no, what did the Bible say in that story? He met us with open arms. He saw from a far distance away his son returning home, his daughter returning home with open arms, and he was there, arms wide, waiting, and as soon as what he received them, he created a banquet, a feast of celebration. That's the, the Father. That's the love that he has for you and I. It's not. He's not a God of judgment, uh, uh, for us, when we turn back to him, he's a God of love. He's a God of reconciliation. He's a God of restoration. The last letter is N, and that stands for new life. New life. The new life that you will receive is a result of taking three actions that we just covered. Trusting, understanding, and repenting. Three things. Trusting, understanding, and re uh, repenting. You might feel that if uh, 
you know, there, we sometimes get a bad perspective on life. We, we sometimes have, you've probably heard some of these bad things that, that uh, have been said. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. Life is just a hereditary disease. Life is a sentence that we have to serve for being born. You've heard some of these things, I'm sure, you know. You, you know, we live, we, we, we pay our taxes, and then we die. We've heard all those kind of things, right? That's, that's the perspective that sometimes uh, is given on life. But uh, you might feel this way, but if your life doesn't inc include Christ, why wouldn't you feel that way? With Christ, it's so much different. The Bible says he, when we ask Jesus into our life, he gives us a new life. It's a brand new life. Romans 3.22 says, God has declared you not guilty. And in 1 Corinthians 5.17, anyone who is joined in Christ uh, Jesus, the old is become, uh, becomes a new man. That which is, is uh, we have has become old, and, and now he brings all things new into us. Isaiah 118 says, Come now, let us settle the matter. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. That Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So we've talked about three different things, really. We've, we've talked about trusting, understanding, and repenting. And the good news is, is that turning our lives over to Christ is a once-in-a-lifetime commitment. It's a once-in-a-lifetime decision. We, we can do that one time. And the rest from that is, is, a, is a whole building process where he takes, like I said earlier, he takes all that which is old. He makes it new. He takes that, that thing. I've used the example before of that old rusty car, and he restores it. He makes it worth more than it ever was before. He takes those things that we see as damaged, as, as is hurt, and he, he says, hey, that's a testimony of how, what I can use in your life, of my grace and my love for you. And he takes all those things. And so if you haven't asked Jesus to be your higher power, the Lord and Savior of your life, I encourage you to do so. And all it takes is, is a simple prayer. And you hear this every week that we, we're in church. It's just a simple prayer acknowledging that, God, I'm a sinner. I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I turn from my sins and I turn towards you. And the Bible says if we believe this in our, in our heart and confess it with our mouth, so it's twofold, it's not just saying aimless words it's not just saying something that that has no meaning it's that understand that hey i need to turn from the way that i've been doing things I, I recognize all those steps before that that denial that powerlessness the insanity of, of what we've been doing and that that you have hope god and you can bring sanity into my life and so god i turn to you it's such an easy it's such an easy thing to do but again it's it's just like that that, that good old backup camera you got to turn your trust you got to turn your trust into that. You got to turn your trust into to Jesus, who who can see the whole picture, who can see more of your life than you can see, and that's what God can can do for us. I hope you got something out of that tonight. And uh, we're gonna do the twelve.